Good afternoon guys, welcome back to Maverick Baking and welcome back to another video. Today, unsurprisingly, we're talking again about chocolate. It's a subject very close to my heart and never very far away from my mouth and I'm sure many of you lovely people are exactly the same. Last month I uploaded a video giving you five ways to tell if your chocolate is good quality. Today's video is kind of a little kind of little follow-up, a little sequel to that. In today's video I want to talk to you about five trashy ingredients that are very often added to your chocolate. To define trashy in this sense, I refer to any ingredient that is ridiculously cheap, that is ridiculously low in quality or actually harmful to our health, especially when used in the quantities it can be used in to produce cheap mass produced chocolate. So we're going to talk about five ingredients I would define as such and just what they are doing to our beloved treats. The first ingredient we're going to talk about today is excess sugar. I'm sure many of you are not surprised by this. Excess sugar is actually often the reason that chocolate gets kind of a bad rap for being unhealthy or fattening. I use the word excess instead of just the word sugar because sugar in any form is not inherently bad for you. Now this is something that the internet and certain Netflix documentaries like to get twisted about, forgetting that sugar is naturally present in many foods that are very beneficial to the human body and sugar is a great source of energy. Sugar and anything that has that sort of natural inherent sweetness is also something that chefs, cooks and even the average person in their own kitchen uses to balance out acidity or bitterness in cooking and have been doing so for centuries now. This is one of the areas where excess sugar can often ruin your chocolate. So instead of tasting of the natural product, Instead of tasting like actual cocoa, like a good quality chocolate bar should, you should be able to taste the actual bean, the way in which it was roasted, if it was roasted at all. Perhaps you might even get different tasting notes depending on which country your cocoa beans came from. When you add sugar to a product like chocolate, just as when you add sugar to coffee, it completely dilutes and almost gets rid of the natural flavor completely. In bars of good quality chocolate, like those I discussed in my previous video, you will actually often find less sugar than you would in a small helping of breakfast cereal or or in standard alcoholic drinks like beer or red wine. Chocolate is not a natural source of sweetness or tooth rotting sugariness and it never has been. However, modern chocolate makers and especially the big brands that you see plastered all over supermarkets, all over petrol stations, anywhere you can buy a standard chocolate bar that is overrun by these mass produced titans of confectionery. These companies pump sugar into their bars for several reasons. The first reason is obviously that nowadays sugar is a cheap commodity. It's no longer the preserve of the wealthy or the preserve of the aristocracy like it was. Instead, it is very, very, very affordable and often can be used to pad out a chocolate bar in place of more expensive cocoa mass or cocoa butter. Secondly, these companies use it, as I previously mentioned, to cover up bad flavor. Companies will often buy the cheapest of cocoa from the worst working conditions for farmers, and I mean the worst, with nothing in mind except the largest amount of product being created as fast as possible. And to meet consumer demand and cover up the flavor of these poorly farmed, poorly roasted, poorly conched and poorly tempered cocoa products, they pump them full of sugar because the human mouth naturally craves, enjoys and wants more and more sugar. So we don't mind the taste of the mediocre product underneath. On that note, the third reason that these companies like to add so much excess sugar to their bars is the addictive nature of it. Now, sugar in itself is not addictive. If you were to eat a spoonful of sugar, you would neither enjoy it nor feel very good afterwards. Fat in itself is not addictive in the same way that if you drank a tablespoon of vegetable oil, it wouldn't taste good and you wouldn't very much enjoy it. But if you put fat and sugar together in the likes of frosting, in the likes of ice cream, in the likes of cheesecake, in the likes of cheap chocolate, this is when you get that indulgent, ridiculously addictive substance that only the very strong among us can resist. <laughs> as I said, the reason that chocolate is often seen as, you know, a kind of junk food 
is due to this excess sugar. If people were to be consuming good quality chocolate, whether it's white milk or dark, you would naturally consume it in smaller quantities because it's far less addictive and has a much more satisfying flavor. This excess sugar leads us to want to eat more and more and more because the human body naturally craves as much energy as it can possibly fit in its belly at one time. This is what keeps us coming back. This is what keeps us eating too much. And this is the trashy ingredient that is really ruining the human experience with chocolate in modern times. The second trashy ingredient that you will very, very often see See added to chocolate bars and perhaps even more controversial than sugar is palm oil and many other vegetable oils. <laughs> palm oil, palm fruit oil, palm kernel oil, sustainable palm oil and many other saturated vegetable oils are pumped into cheap chocolate like there is no tomorrow. As we know, as many adverts and many documentaries and books and websites have brought to our attention, palm oil is rather terrible. For the environment. It destroys the natural habitat of many indigenous animals, it can destroy the natural biodiversity of an entire region, and it is a huge, huge factor in the increasing deforestation that we see across the planet, which is not only affecting the two things I just mentioned, but also our own oxygen intake, which I would say is quite an important thing. Now, while some brands do farm it sustainably, for the most part, it's a fairly problematic crop. It's cheap, it's plentiful, and it's easy for these brands to get a hold of it. This affordability and availability is used in place of more expensive but more delicious products like cocoa butter. So the chocolate itself hasn't been made in a way that makes it good quality to have a lovely mouthfeel and melting quality. No, they add artificial fats to your chocolate to make it feel smooth and creamy when the chocolate itself is actually hidden under sugar and palm oil with chocolate down here somewhere. <laughs> Ultimately, in our lives, it's very, very hard to avoid palm oil completely. In fact, I have actually had a few comments from people asking me to address the issue a bit more, and I have considered even trying to do a week without palm oil video, so let me know if you would be interested in that. The third trashy ingredient that gets added to your chocolate is flavouring. Now, flavoring isn't always necessarily a bad thing. Many chocolate companies, whether they are big chocolate companies or little independent craft chocolate companies, like to create flavored bars because while chocolate is delicious, there is only so much you can do with a single cocoa bean. Sometimes you might want to add some coffee. Sometimes you might want to add some orange, some rose, some nuts. You might want to add any kind of flavoring your mind can create. And that is always good fun and always delicious. The flavoring I'm talking about here is the senseless adding of flavoring that does nothing but mask, again, poor quality cocoa or just a poor quality chocolate product in general. Your Dairy Milk, your Mars, whatever you can think of, it likely contains vanilla. When we're talking about sex, we use vanilla as a term for boring or regularly plain and everyday. But when you're talking about vanilla as an actual ingredient, it's not exactly one's definition of plain. When you think about where vanilla comes from and how kind of hard to come by an actual vanilla pod and its seeds are, you start to realize it's a bit more exotic than you might think. Cheap vanilla flavoring is often added to chocolate because it gives us that sort of reminiscent childhood sweetness. It reminds you of ice cream. It reminds you of milkshakes. It reminds you of cheesecakes, of cakes, of anything that might have had a little kind of splash of vanilla flavoring in there that goes so well with sugar and your brain will often associate with sweetness and good flavor. So in these cheap genetic chocolate bars I was talking about a minute ago, they will always contain this vanilla flavoring. The vanilla flavoring is not only there to give you this nostalgic, warm, cozy, familiar flavor, but it's also to mask bad tasting chocolate. Beans that have been rushed through the roasting process or the fact that the bar actually contains very little beans at all because it's all sugar and palm oil, this vanilla adds that kind of welcome, reminiscent sweetness that you expect from a cheap milk chocolate bar. But it's usually a sign of trash. <laughs> the other kind of flavorings I might discuss under this heading can depend on where you live on the planet. 
talking about artificial flavorings. So this is something you won't see as much in the UK because we do have higher food standards, we have stricter food regulations, not a bad thing, means that we don't often see artificial flavoring. You will see products that are fruit flavored, but they have to actually be derived from fruit. In American chocolate bars and American candy products, you will see the term artificially flavored or natural and artificially flavored. Don't really know why that's anything to boast about either way, to be honest. <laughs> An interesting example of artificial flavoring is vanillin. So this is used in place of vanilla, which is more expensive. Vanillin is actually made from petrochemicals and it's a byproduct of the paper industry. Obviously the word chemical is not to be used as a placeholder for the word bad when it comes to anything edible, but I feel like if a company needs to use a petrochemical byproduct to make its product taste better, its product doesn't taste good in the first place, you know? The fourth trashy ingredient that is often added to your chocolate is a relatively new one to the market, but we are talking about whey powder. Yeah. Whey powder is a byproduct of milk. It's the kind of powdery, protein rich stuff. Whey powder is used in chocolate to give it a kind of milky, creamy flavor. For this reason, you will most often see it in white chocolate products, especially in healthy white chocolate products, such as the Milky Bar Wowsums we had, I think, a year or so ago in the UK. They were pumped full of this whey powder to imitate that sort of creamy richness and also to add some protein content, which really, if you're looking for protein in your chocolate, behave yourself. <laughs> I've even seen whole brands whose USP is adding whey powder to chocolate to make them rich in protein. And let me tell you, the texture is so bad, it makes you want to go and eat celery sticks. <laughs> Whey powder can also be used to reduce the calorie content of a bar and pad it out in place of, again, more expensive ingredients like cocoa butter or decent cocoa mass. This, again, is a terrible idea. Typically, with anything to do with chocolate, it's always going to be high in calories because it's a high-fat product. The same with cheese, the same with most delicious things in the planet. But the key, usually, if you want good quality or to maintain better health, is just to eat and enjoy these things in smaller Plus, whey powder can often add such a terrible, 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 terrible texture. It creates this disgusting, powdery, chalky consistency in a chocolate bar that when you're sitting back, chilling, cup of tea in one hand, chocolate bar in the other, and you're trying to let this lovely bar of chocolate that you've spent actual money, actual British pounds on, you're letting it sit and melt on your tongue and it kind of half melts and then it turns into this weird powdery paste and you have to sort of scrape it off the roof of your mouth before you can even get around to tasting it. It's bad, don't do it. <laughs> the fifth and final trashy ingredient that is often added to your chocolate are artificial sweeteners. Again, this is more of a kind of recent development. It's one that's backed by public demand a little bit also, which is depressing to say the least. <laughs> Artificial sweeteners have not always been present in chocolate products, um, especially not in the UK where I am from. On the back of the sugar tax and, you know, as our country has an ever increasing obese population, companies began reading the room and adding artificial sweeteners to their products or creating a 30% less sugar drink or chocolate bar or anything to try and make it more appealing to those who might be diabetic, to those who may be trying to lose weight or just trying to reduce their sugar intake. The problems, as always, are quite unpleasant though. The first being that the flavor often suffers greatly when you add artificial sweeteners. When you eat something that has sugar in it, you will obviously taste sweetness on your tongue and you will swallow it and it'll be fine. You'll be like, wow, that was quite sweet might want some more, might not, that's it. When you are eating something or drinking something that contains artificial sweeteners, you have this sort of weird artificial lasting sweetness that lingers on the back of your tongue and at the top of your throat. Think of the difference between drinking Diet Coke and full sugar Coke. It's that same sort of effect in that you're never really satisfied and you have this unpleasant flavor afterwards. So instead of fully enjoying this treat that you have purchased, you're not. When you could have just bought the actual thing, enjoyed it more, and you wouldn't want to eat more to feel more satisfied. The other more uh, problematic issue with artificial sweeteners is often the uh, colossal impact it can have on your digestive system. Now, I don't know much about the kind of long-term effects of artificial sweeteners, and I won't profess to be any kind of expert on it. But as someone who has suffered the uh, 
side effects of eating too much of these artificial sweeteners and read up plenty about it, I can confidently tell you that in large, not even large quantities really, in just average quantities, bars that contain these artificial sweeteners can have a major laxative effect. I'll leave the rest to your imagination. But this isn't something you should want from your chocolate, is it? So those are five trashy ingredients that are very often added to your chocolate. Now, as in my last video, this is me in no way telling you what you should and shouldn't buy. Everyone has their own taste. Maybe some people like artificial sweeteners. Maybe some people prefer palm oil and vegetable oil in their chocolate bars. More power to you. You do you. This channel is not about telling you what you should and should not eat at all. All I wish to do with this video and with these kind of series of chocolate related videos is to kind of make sure you're getting your money's worth. Cheaply produced chocolate is not made out of passion, it's made to make money, which again is not inherently bad but it often means poorer quality. As discussed in the last video, this can mean you find it less satisfying, so you buy more, you eat more, and you're actually paying more for something you're not enjoying as much as you could, especially when these trashy ingredients are added to it. You're paying money for something that isn't even actual chocolate. You're paying money for something that could be harmful to your health in the long or the short term, and you're paying not to enjoy chocolate for what it actually is, chocolate. On that note, I will drop a few links to some chocolate companies that I would seriously recommend you buying from if you are still in lockdown or if you just want a bit of a chocolate hit. These are brands that are kind of lesser known, but they produce some really good quality stuff. They produce these products with passion, with love, with care, and without trashy ingredients. In the meantime, that is all I have to say on chocolate for today, but I'm sure I will have more to say very soon, and I look forward to seeing you then. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you for the next one.